guys I am back in Panama it is so amazing to be back on Parlay it's also amazing to be back with these guys so Sylvie did a great job looking after them but look how big Lindo is he is a little tank now just come back from the super yacht and um, I'm just so excited to try get Parlay back in the water but yeah, so I was, I've been away for two months now, including the um, the trip to France to go see Lagoon. And um, it's just so, so good to be back. So um, we've got a few changes, as you know. Um, Jamie is now captain on an 82 footer and there was quite a few questions asking if he was coming back. Um, no, he's, he's on to the next phase in his life. It's a big step in the right direction for him. Uh, you know, being first mate on here is one thing, but uh, running an 82 foot catamaran is an amazing opportunity for him. And um, he's loving it. They're, they're taking crew on and they're sailing around the Caribbean and having a great time. And he's loving it. He's learning a lot. Um, got a lot of responsibility now. He's got a lot of crew that he's responsible for. And I'm sure he's um, taking a lot of the things that he learned on here um, over to the new boat. Bring the beer on the water. Ready? So I'm super happy for him um, and it just makes sense and he's getting good money and uh, everything's just working out so well for him and I'm just so so happy for him. But at the same time it's sad not to have him around of course, he was my right hand man. I've wore these three times running so they stink. <laughs> I got that on <laughs> He put his blood, sweat and tears into this boat um, and I'll be forever grateful that he, for that. He knows uh, he's welcome back anytime. I think the reason the relationship worked so well is that he gave me so much but he also received a lot from just everyone on Parlay and just being here in general so you know we sailed to some incredible countries we got some amazing memories he was there when we you know even when we first set up Patreon he was the one pushing to start Patreon um, he was pushing to uh, start the merchandise store and um, he's been there through all of the all of the great times and a lot of the bad times as well how long before we can be harvesting some herbs uh, it's gonna take three months I reckon <laughs> I think we are both quite grateful to uh, have had this friendship and uh, it will be a lifelong friendship of course but um, it just was a very balanced um, relationship that we had and I'll be forever grateful to have had him in our lives. <laughs> Is that shit bad too? Yeah, yeah, yeah everything. So I want to tell you a little story. There was a guy from New Zealand, he flew all the way to Panama to buy one of the boats behind me, a big 75 foot steel catch. Um, the deal fell through and he was left wondering what to do with himself and he messaged me and he said um, he's watched a few of our episodes, he's in Panama and was wondering if he could come and help out for a while. So we started talking back and forth and it turns out he's the cousin of one of my friends from back home in New Zealand. Tom also spent uh, nearly 10 months um, sailing around Australia with a YouTube channel called Expedition Drenched. So I messaged Nate from Expedition Drenched and asked for a bit of a reference and uh, about this guy Tom and he said he's an amazing guy and a great musician and uh, has a great attitude. So long story short, this is Tom. Good everybody. So, uh, how does it feel to be here, mate? Uh, I am freaking stoked. I'm really? Just, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just ridiculously stoked to be here. I think you touched on um, why I came to Panama. Yeah. I came to buy a boat. Um, didn't work out. There's a bit of a story behind that, but uh, I won't get into it too much now. I went back to Panama City, and then I caught COVID. And then... Uh, so, <laughs> So that's been my Panama trip so far. I've been here a month <laughs> and, uh, and I, was, I was bedridden for two weeks. It actually nailed me. So um, you were sailing with Expedition Drenched. Yep. Is it from that experience you felt 
the confidence to to buy your own because so this boat's what 70 something feet 74 it's a big ass boat you felt confident um you've said like with the right people around you the right mm -hmm. experienced people around you you felt confident to take the take that boat to new zealand one day yeah yeah so that's usually my style is uh throw myself in the deep end mm -hmm. you know, that's how i tend to to learn yeah I, it would have been a challenge like Sure. undeniably yeah, yeah but you know i wasn't afraid to do it i if i had the right people around me um which i did have organized i had some people flying in from um, from from the states from yeah. italy from spain uh to come and help me um but yeah because that all just yeah. got turned upside down on me then uh yeah that all that all just changed now that i'm here in panama and i see how it works i see how difficult it is to get parts and and yeah. and um, skilled labor yeah. and, and, and whatnot um, I can see now that it would have been far more of a challenge than yeah. I had have anticipated yeah. uh, you know we want to encourage people to uh, follow their dreams and everything but you do have to be realistic and, and yeah. you were realistic and you were you sensibly walked away from this deal which isn't easy to do either like after you yeah. spent months with your heart set on something you know everything happens for a reason and um, and and now I'm here and I'm I couldn't be couldn't be happier here yeah. So we, we try to inspire our audience as much as possible to follow their dreams, follow their heart, mm. follow their passions, do something that they love doing, um, do something out of the ordinary. I and mean, that's kind of exactly what you've done because you've had, you know, you've had businesses back home, construction businesses, yep. and um, you, you, weren't, um, you weren't talking about it. You came here to do it. And although that particular boat didn't work out, you came and you were literally ready to go head first into this adventure. Just with all these bags. Somebody's packing up and somebody's leaving. It's me. Yeah? What are you doing, dude? What's your yeah, plan? I'm heading out. I'm heading to Panama. I have 90% um, I have bought a boat. What is it that enabled you to take the plunge to go out and do it? It's, it's not just one particular thing. No, There's been an accumulation of things throughout my life. Um, and one of them, a big one, was my father. Um, my father passed away when I was 22. Um, he, he died suddenly, he had a heart attack, and he was 54 years old. And that changed the way I looked at life a little bit. It reminded me that life is temporary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, 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 I think we forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. we forget that. Um, you know, we all sort of, not all, you know, I think a lot of us are guilty of, um, of living life like we're never going to die, um, but the reality of life is, is death. Yeah, for that's sure. The only, that's the only fact to life, really. I believe when I, when something comes my way, I think, okay, what am I going to do here? Show you with dance and stuff. Well, life's temporary, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, you know, make the most of every moment. Yeah, and try to have minimal regrets. Yeah, yeah. Well, fuck, if that's not inspirational, I don't know what is. <laughs> so I guess one other thing that the audience will be very interested to hear is that you are a musician. We've yeah. been jamming out. He plays the ukulele. He's got an incredible voice. He's been in bands before. Uh, we've already spoken about maybe recording a few things for some episodes. Yeah, so keep, cool. uh, keep an ear out for that. So now that we've got Tom who's holding <laughs> the camera here, we're playing guitar a little bit more. So while I was in the city yesterday, I bought myself a little early birthday present. <laughs> this is my old one. I think I bought it for like 50 bucks. And I just can't make it sound good. So, you know, always blame, blame the tools. Listen to this. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> now listen to the new one. Stop it. Huh? Should we give them a little fucking little taste? Sure. Well, I pulled into Nashville, Tennessee. You wouldn't even come around to see me And 
since you're heading up to Carolina You know I'm gonna be right there behind you Cause I always have to steal my kisses from you Always have to steal my kisses from you Always have to steal my kisses from you I always have to steal my kisses from you love to feel that warm southern rain And to hear it fall is sweet as sound and thing And to see it fall on your simple country dress ah, Like heaven to me I must confess Cause I always have to steal my kisses from you Always have to steal my kisses from you Always have to steal my kisses from you I always have to steal my kisses from Yeah. Nailed it. it. Sounds good. Keep an ear out for that. We're going to be recording. A, well, he's going to be recording. I might scratch away no, yeah, at you're the guitar. In he's, he's good too. <laughs> he's good. We've put a work list together. Um, we've got two lists. We've got the list that we want to get done before we go in the water and to enable us to splash and then we've got another list of jobs that we're going to continue to do to um to uh, get this boat up to scratch but super exciting to have tom obviously from new zealand so it's nice to have a mm. reminder of home with me now and he's he's got a construction background so he's he's great with the tools and everything but yeah i'm excited man thanks for coming along yeah and, thanks uh, for having me hopefully we get this boat in the water and do some sailing yeah don't want it nice all right, just got a call from my friend Mike, who's down the road. His boat's almost dragging onto a reef, and he can't get a ride back here. So we're gonna quickly go in the dinghy and try to tow it into a safe area, and um, make sure it doesn't hit that reef, but it's only a few meters away. So we gotta move. Always something around here. Okay, here we are. It's pretty calm right now, but he's dragged about 70 meters. So right there is the reef. So we'll jump on. You can see the reef right there. So if this thing swung around, it probably would hit the reef. But we'll just jump on, see if we can fire it up, maybe move it for him. Uh, it's our friends. Oh, they hit you? Yeah. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, man. Old school. Kidding me? All right, I just managed to get the uh, engine started. Um, but yeah, he was anchored behind that trimaran, and when he dragged, he hit the trimaran, which is a nice German guy. So I think I'm going to just. Um, Get the anchor up and we'll just move him back over to there. Did you just... Right there. Oh, did, I ask, well, I did you just see the boat just run out like that? Oh. Nah, no, so I, they caught... Freddie called me, but apparently he hit the trimaran. Yeah, I think you hit this guy here. I didn't see it. We just came out and this guy was shouting. Okay. And then I saw you were over here. How much chain do you have up? Enough? I, I have put 60. 60. There's a moor in here you could use, you could maybe dive it, I don't know how good it is, but... He's ended up right next to a uh, mooring, so he said he's going to leave his anchor chain out and tie to the mooring as well, and just sit there. Problem is, he's the owner, but he's not the captain. He uh, normally has a captain that does all this stuff for him, so... I don't know if I'd be trusting that mooring. Better off. Hey Mike, we can just help you anchor again and we dig the anchor in properly. I don't know, unless you swim on that, I wouldn't tie and leave it. We 
went to re-anchor the boat, but Mike's captain, Caesar, made it out to the boat, who was super experienced, so we left them to it. Caesar! What's up, bro? We're gonna jump out. <laughs> We're gonna go, right. Caesar's here. Yeah. Okay, you're fine. Oh, Captain's back. Thanks so much, guys. Later, this was awesome. Thanks so much. No man. problem. Yeah. <laughs> you jumping again or what? <laughs> oh, we didn't do much. <laughs> There we go. We didn't end up doing too much because the weather calmed right down by the time we got there, but um, Mike was pretty stoked that we were there. We figured out how to turn his batteries on and start his engines. I'm always a huge believer in uh, just dropping whatever you're doing and just helping anyone or any boat that's in, uh, in distress because you just hope that other people will do the same if it was you in that situation. So. Um, wherever we can. This stuff happens all the time. People always drag. Um, this was sort of best case scenario of a dragging situation where the weather calmed down and they can just safely re-anchor. But like I said, if I'm ever not on my boat and they see my boat dragging across the bay, I hope sailors around will just drop everything and help the boat in distress. Good karma, baby. So, we spoke about the work lists. This is what we got going on. I don't know if you can read that. Um, but yeah, we'll just go through it real quick. We're gonna build a hard top. So that's a really exciting one coming up. Um, obviously we have to do the anti-fail before we go in the water. We've got some things to do in the cabins. We have to finish the transom extension. So we've got the um, non-skid mold that we made right before I went on the super yacht. So now we can made, make the actual pieces from that mold which glue onto the back step there on our new little swim platform. Steering cables, we'll go into all of this stuff in a lot more detail. Got some underwater lights to put in. A little bit of fiberglass work. We want to try to get all the fiberglass work done out of the water so that when we go in, we're just doing more uh, engineering stuff. And so engineering stuff is, this is our other list. Need to organize it, but we have a full lithium battery installation we have to do um, we have some battle born batteries they're in florida right now we're about to get them shipped down so that's going to be really exciting um, I, the batteries on the boat are, are screwed we need to replace them so they're not even holding 12 volts overnight with one fridge running let alone two so those got to go um what else we're doing a full rain marine installation so we have a, a, a full um upgrade of chart plotters um depth sounders we got a radar we've never had radar before new vhf because that's where the lightning came down so the vhf got a new vhf antenna probably have to run a new vhf cable pretty sure we got struck the fucking vhf antenna is not there we have to do a water maker installation and one of the big things that's coming up is, is we've got to do a, a sea trial so once we go in the water um, we have a rigger lined up and he is gonna tension the rig um, we're gonna do that while we're sailing to, to tune it probably we're gonna do that while we're sailing we do not want to over tension the rig um, as we've found out and as a lot of people have found out over tensioning the rig is one of the worst things you can do in terms of the structure of the boat because it puts unnecessary um, forces on the bulkhead and we all know how that ended for a lot of Lagoon 450 owners. So we're going to just put the minimum amount of tension on. When the rig goes slack slightly we're going to use that as the indication that we need to reef. So when we reduce the sail area obviously there's less force on the mast and the rigging and that will take the slack out of it. So that's our plan. We're really excited to um, finally get this boat tuned properly. Um, he's a rigger from New Zealand actually so um, I've been in contact with him. He's also a surveyor, so he's going to do a survey. I need to put that on the list. We need to do a out of water survey as well. Um, we need the survey for insurance purposes. So, um, yeah, and then we're going to do a sea trial. And we might go out to Sandblast Islands um, and just see what how the boat behaves. See if all of this creaking and moaning and groaning that was going on within the boat disappears. And I'm fairly confident that 
that would be the case because we've made this bulk it's so strong without that flexing and cracking and bending the boat will be a lot more rigid and um, it's super exciting so that's what's coming up guys a lot of work um, and then we're going to go through the Panama Canal and sail into the Pacific and then we'll take it from there so stay tuned